but um, um, so yeah, I'm a, I've started as as a musician really, um, and, and then drifted into academia, uh, you know, uh, in, in my twenties, and I've just kind of mixed things up a little bit ever since. Started to get into theatre a little bit uh, after that, mm. so. Um, I'll give anything a go, basically, just anything to, to stop me working uh, or ha having to see students. <laughs> in um, in a perfect world, which is your favourite thing to be doing? I think theatre is great fun uh, in in any in any aspect uh, because it's 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 collective and it's kind of organic and you see stuff growing. But I, I love I love being in the studio as well. I love I love music. I love performing um, music. And then you know, academia is a different kind of pleasure. It's it's slower and it's 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 more considered and it takes place over a much longer time frame. So I think they've all got their 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 pleasures and their attractions. Um, and I, I kind of I, I would resist the logic that would ask me to to uh, to, to state a preference of one over the others. Yeah. I'd feel I was cheating on them. <laughs> no, that's very true very true um so you're professor of irish cultural history is this um i, I noticed that was a, something that started about 2015 is that right in at uh, the john moore's uni yes i became i became a uh, professor of irish cultural history then although i worked at john moore's for a, for a long time so that's a reflection of, of my kind of principal research interest uh, all, all my kind of most of my research has been in the area of uh, Irish cultural history. I've done a lot of stuff on music. I started off kind of quite uh, theory based and, and doing a lot of literary theory and literary history. Um, and then I kind of changed to music around about the early noughties. I kind of you going back to your earlier question. I realized that I was focusing too much on 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 literature and I kind of like lost the music in, in my life to a certain extent. So I wanted to get back into it, and I thought it'd be a good idea to kind of marry the two together. Um, popular music studies was just emerging as a discipline around around about then, um, and then I realised that there was no kind of comprehensive history of Irish popular music, for, you know, in the post-war period. So I said, I'm going to write that book, um, and I did, and then a couple of others followed. So. Um, yeah, so it's it's and so all, most of the work has been in the in the area of Irish cultural history. So when I, I was going to take my professorship, that seemed the obvious uh, nomination for me. And it's referred to as Irish modernism. Is that that's the sort of umbrella for the whole um, whole department? Is that is that right at the university, or, is, or am I mis misreading that somewhere? That's you completely misreading that, Ben. <laughs> Um, that's always my way. That's that's all right. Cultural history is 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 the kind of discipline that, that I work in. Uh, I'm interested in all aspects of culture from the past and about how we kind of we find out about it, the kind of sources that we have to use, and then you know how how we read or how we interpret stuff. Modernism refers to a kind of project that I worked on for a number of years from the early 20th century, um, you know, alongside international modernism, you know, including music and art and literature and architecture and so on. So I was interested in specifically the Irish aspect of that. I was looking yeah. at people like Joyce, James Joyce, W.B. Yeats, eventually up as far as Sam Beckett, Flann O'Brien, of course, who's um, uh, another person I'm very interested in. So. Um, that, that was the kind of modernist aspect of it, but but no, it's it's a department of English literature uh, that that I work in, but okay. I'm, a, I'm left over from a kind of previous model in which historians and cultural historians had a much um, more active role. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice. And um, so, how closely does the 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 whole sea shanty sit within your kind of the work you've been doing with? With Irish music, is there a big connection between between um, between the two musical styles? I think there is, um, but I didn't go in kind of expecting it to to be there. I mean, I got in, interested in Shandy's Shandy's kind of independently. Um, it really kind of grew out of out of just kind of my 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 my, my hobbies and my interests, and I, because I live in Hoy Lake, which is quite close to the beach. Um, and I used to walk on the beach every day and I kind of I got interested in, in, in that. Um, and I, you know, I've been in folk clubs and things like that. So I knew about there was a kind of strong maritime tradition. But then I discovered that, that uh, one of the principal shanty researchers of the founts of, of shanty lore 
was also from Hoylake. In fact, he, he, was, uh, he was brought up about 150 meters from where I'm sitting at the moment. That's a guy named Stan Hugel, uh, who, who was born uh, in Hoylake. And once you start to do research, you, you, you realize that Stan Hugel is the man. Um, he published about four or five books. Uh, he, you know, he, he, um, he went to sea just after the First World War. Um, and, and, and he kind of worked on, on, the, on the kind of a residual sailing tradition in, in, in the interwar uh, years. But he, he, he learned a lot of shanties from people who had, had done it way back in, into the beginning of, into the end of the 19th century. Um, so he was a kind of genuine connection between uh, the authentic tradition from the 19th century and uh, its, its kind of rediscovery as part of a folk movement. So I got interested in it through the beach, the sea, um, folk clubs, and then Stan Hugel. But I had no thought really of kind of doing anything particularly academic with it in the first instance. Uh, I, I kind of got together with some some mates of mine from, from Wallasey and, and we put together a kind of shanty group uh, in, in order to record an album, but we did a few gigs. Yeah, the Rock uh, Light Rollers, is that right? That's, that's right, yeah. Mm. Um, so we did a few gigs and then we, we, we we recorded an album of shanties and it was just fun you know we did the river festival in liverpool we did um a few a few gigs around the around the city we recorded the album and we just had a, had a good time and it was only after that at a certain point that i realized actually there's a very strong research tradition uh relating to shanties as well and i, I kind of started to notice that there were interesting things in the material itself because every, you know, you, you, when you kind of go looking, you discover that, well, for one thing, there are multiple versions of all these songs and you have to choose which one you're going to sing, uh, which verses you're going to include and not include. Um, and then you start to notice that uh, the material uh, has certain kind of uh, recurring ideas and motifs that, that become interesting and, and so on and so on. So at a certain point around about 2013, 2014, I kind of start with this, this kind of mileage in this for, for, for research purposes. So that's when I started to pursue that element of it. Nice. So um, the book that has um, come out, and hopefully a, a few of you have either got it or received it already, or uh, perhaps you've had it already, uh, just a stunning work of art, frankly. I mean, um, but, um, let's let's talk about the artwork, actually. I mean, where, where, where did... Um, where did the, where did that come from? The design work, which which continues throughout inside as well, which I'm not sure I can see, but there's so many beautiful um, bits inside uh, and photos as well. So, firstly, the, the artwork. Where did where did that come from? Well, I, I was commissioned to, to write the book in about 2017 or 2018 in the first instance, and uh, on on the on the on the back of an article that I'd written for an academic journal called the Journal of Maritime uh, uh, History. And it was about shanties and Liverpool in particular. Um, and somebody um, at, at the, 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 the British Library must have done a, a Google search and found, found my name and thought, hey, let's try him. Um, he seems to know what he's talking about. So um, I, I said yes initially, and I did some, some, some quick early research on, on what might be uh, possible to include in such a book. Then I didn't hear anything for about a year and I thought that the project had, had died. But then I, I heard back from them again in 2019 and said, this is on, do you really, do you fancy giving it a go? Um, and I'd, I'd already committed to doing another couple of books at that stage, but I said, yeah, I really would because I've already done some work and I really want to, I really like the project. So I, I was responsible only for the text, for the writing, and for the musical annotations that are included in the book. It, it was the library's decision to um, incorporate this textual material alongside other, other stuff, um, photographs, paintings that, that belong to their archive, but also original artwork. Mm. And the original artwork is, is, uh, is um, undertaken by a contemporary Scottish artist named Johnny Hanna, who actually studied in Liverpool at John Moore's um, and must have been there when I, when, you know, when I was there because I've been there forever really, but now who, who, um, who, who lives and works in, I think, Southampton. Um, and and um, if you go looking for his, his stuff, it's, it's all over the internet and he's got a very particular style. It's colorful, it's, it's attractive, it's very kind of uh, 
figurative in, in, in some sense, senses, and it's very kind of individual. So you've got a real kind of visual signature. And of course, it's absolutely perfect for, for this material. And it would be anyway, but he, as a kind of good kind of artist, what he did was he went to the material, he obviously read it, read about it, and then he tailored his work to kind of fit in with what was already, uh, what, what I'd written. So it may seem that we sat down and collaborated and, and, and talked about this at length, but, but we didn't. It's just, I did the writing, Johnny got hold of the writing and read it and responded to it by, and then included material. So you, so you never met him, I suspect. No, I've never met him. I've never oh. met him because um, the, the other thing, this book was ready. Um, I mean, it was supposed to come out last year. It was supposed to come out in 2020. Um, so I'd finished it in the early months of 2020 um, and I'd sent it off and then they'd done all the artwork and all the production and all the design and so on. Um, and the, the, the publishers and the editors at the British Library said, OK, we're, we're going to give this a real push over the summer. We're going to try to catch the Falmouth Shanty Festival in June, I think it is, and maybe one or two of the other big uh, folk festivals, Cambridge and Shrewsbury and uh, Sidmouth. Um, and, and give it a real push, try and get it into the BBC, try and get a few newspapers to cover it and so on and so on. Um, and then we all know what happened next. <laughs> yeah. um, so that, that, that idea was scuppered, um, if you don't mind, you know, that's another dad, dad joke for you. <laughs> and they said, look, let, let's, 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 let's leave it. Uh, the books are printed now, so, but it just doesn't make any sense to try and, try and push them in this sense. So, uh, curiously, they, they published it in, in conjunction with an, an American uh, publisher, the University of Washington Press out of Seattle. And they went ahead and kind of published it anyway. Um, so it, it may have something to do with their more uh, uh, blasé, is that too blasé a term? They're, 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 they're kind of less uh, fearful response to the, to, the, to the pandemic. They said, wow. you know, well, we're, gonna, we're gonna go ahead and publish it anyway. So that came out in June in, in the States. Um, so has this been a very muted kind of experience for you for the last six months? So no. They're very muted in terms of not many interviews, not much profile, not much. No, no, there hasn't been anything going, going on at all, really. I mean, we, we went into, you know, um, I, I work in a university department, so there was issues about teaching. And uh, so we had to kind of deal with all that before Christmas. In the meantime, I'd finished these three books I was, I was working on, or just about, and they were all due to come out around about the same time, um, just after Christmas. Um, I've got an academic book on James Joyce and music, uh, we, we got a, a fun book that I wrote with my colleague Andrew Sherlock on um, the, the, the Lost Letters of Flann O'Brien and we had Sailor Song, that's the Lost Letters of Flann O'Brien yeah, yeah, yeah. um, and that's doing really well at the moment as well to be honest, uh, people are getting a big kick out of that uh, all around the world. Um, so, um, yes, yeah, so I was kind of expecting just, you know, whatever happened with academic books generally, you, you get a review here and there. Uh, people one might mention it to you at a conference in six months or 12 months time, but that's not the way it panned out. No, indeed. But uh, I do think, you know, there's something of cultural importance in terms of what you've produced here. Um, because sea shanty is a, a, a big part of our history, you know, as, a, as, a, as, a, as an island nation, I suspect. And um, so I think you collecting as many of them up as you i mean that's the que the question you've obviously collected up um in fact i've not I've not even counted how many there are but um um stacks <laughs> is my there's, scientific number there's 40 shanties and there's 10 ballads right and uh, so and you had to choose which ones to sh was that an easy choice or were there a million you left out um there wasn't a million i left out i mean it's 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 ultimately it's a limited canon I, I i guess and and it's very insecure a canon there's no kind of point where this is where the shanty um um song finishes and then something else begins it, it's it's a kind of fractured uncertain um form um so we probably don't know all the songs that were used as shanties uh during its heyday uh, the ones that have come down to us are probably the most popular but they've come down to us in multiple forms as well um, and, and there's there's no there's, there's no kind of finished version to which we can appeal and say, look, there's the actual real authentic shanty, um, and everything else is a kind of aberration of of, of sorts. 
that's just not the way this particular form works. Um, if you go to Stan Tuchel's books, you'll find multiple versions of, of any, any given shanty and with multiple verses in, included in them. So it, it's, a, it's a series of kind of choices all the way along the line. Uh, not only what shanties you're going to, 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 to do, but what version you're going to do, what you're going to leave in, what you're going to leave out. Um, and, well, I, I mean, I can talk later on about, if, if you like, about the kind of maritime tradition. You're, you're absolutely right, of course. It's a, it's a very important form for, for, for an island nation. But it's a very important form for, for the world, basically, because, I mean, 19th century trade was by and large, well, very importantly, um, maritime, especially after the end of the, the Napoleonic Wars and the kind of the opening up of trade in that particular phase of capitalism, which came along there, relied on these big ships getting across the, the, the oceans as quickly as possible with as much material as they could um, with small crews so that it, it wasn't, it was, it remained a kind of uh, good financial option. Um, and this particular form emerged to, to kind of serve as that context, that, that need. It only lasts a kind of pretty, you know, short time, 50, 60 years. Yeah. Um, but, it, but it remains a very important form. And how do you define a shanty? And I, and I kind of, um, I sort of bracket that question in, in the form that, you know, we've all seen the social media Wellerman um, thing that's been rushing around and, and, and a lot of um, people jumping up and down saying, yeah, but that's not a shanty. Now, I, I don't understand uh, why it's not a shanty. Uh, maybe, maybe you can, you can tell, tell us what a shanty is and also why the Wellerman isn't a shanty. I can try. I mean, the first um, line of my my uh, my book is the shanty is a form of work song that developed on the commercial vessels which sailed the world seas during the 19th century. So that's a kind of basic definition. Yeah. The work that was performed on board these ships was of uh, very particular kinds. The jobs were mostly pulling and pushing uh, in, in, in involved. Um, so there, there was very little well, there was kind of no external form of energy generation other than the wind and the muscles of the, of the crew. Um, so everything relied on that. Um, and these jobs um, had to be performed in particular ways uh, in order to kind of make sure that they were performed as efficiently as possible. Um, and it, they, they kind of discovered that if, um, if everybody was doing the same thing at the same time, then the likelihood was that the job would be um, completed more quickly and more, more efficiently. Now, in order to serve as that, 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 that kind of truth or that, that fact, particular song forms developed, which enabled everybody to do the same thing at the same time. Because we have this amazing thing called rhythm, you know, which is one, two, three, four, one, two, three. Now, we can all kind of chant that together as long as somebody gives you the rhythm and you know where the emphasis is going to fall, then we can all do that together. And it's great. It doesn't matter what you put in, in over there, as long as that on the, on the line, one, two, three, four, one, two, as long as that remains the same, then we're, we're game ball, we're, 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 we're on the same page. So depending on the job of work to be done, either hauling a sail uh, or, or heaving a capstan or uh, pushing a pump or pulling a rope and walk away or whatever job had to be done, particular song forms emerged to service those jobs. Um, people learned the songs, a good shanty man with a good voice would know, he would know the ship very well, he would know uh, maritime practice very well, and he would, he, would, uh, he, he would know the songs that were available to service those jobs. It was his job to kind of start off things and get, get things going. Uh, and it's a kind of call and response format uh, a bit like this, the plantation songs that, that uh, we, you may have heard of from the from kind of slave culture. Um, so somebody sings a line and the, 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 the work gang sings the response. At some point during that response, everybody performs the same action at the same time. Mm. And he, hey, wow, that, that, was, that was good, that worked. Rather than everybody pulling at different times or saying, you do it, no, I want to do it. Or, everybody knows what they're supposed to do and everybody does it at the same time. Now, this kind of emerges from below as a kind of cultural form. It's, first of all, it's the sailors themselves doing it because they want to do the job more efficiently. 
Now, a lot of time you might expect that those kind of practices would be kind of clamped down by, by the officer or the, or the owner class. But of course, they saw that it was working, that it was efficient, that it was making the job uh, be performed quicker, getting the ship across the ocean quicker. So they, they allowed it to happen. In fact, they encouraged it to happen. And uh, people would be employed sometimes just because of their shanty prowess. Mm -hmm. And everybody was expected to know the songs. Everybody was expected to sing along and, and contribute to the kind of the, the teamwork. Um, so I, I use the word concerted uh, in, in the book a couple of times. And I think that's a kind of fair word to describe what's going on here. It's a kind of concert, but it's a concert in which it's concerted. Everybody's doing the same thing at the same time. So the so the shanty man is the is the one who chose the song knew knew the the responsibilities on the on on the ship and and would choose the song accordingly and uh, I was I I I've obviously had a, a read and he, he very often that the shanty man didn't actually have to do that much labour himself he he was just a singer is that is that is that truth or is there um uh, I mean he was employed I mean obviously very well paid but actually didn't get deeply involved in the labor part, which, which seems like a great job for a musician. <laughs> I'm not sure that if that's absolutely true. I think that they might've been given lighter duties and they might've been older than some of the other mem members of the crew. Um, but the, it, it, it was a kind of uncertain um, status on, on board the ship. It didn't have a kind of designation like second mate or first mate or uh, bosun or anything like that. It was just a kind of um, informal designation um, and it was kind of as much used by the crews as, as by, by the, uh, the uh, owners um, as, as, as a kind of uh, designation. Who, who's the singer on board this ship? Somebody would say. Um, yeah. And then some guy would step forward. He would give the line and um, then, then things would swing into action. Yeah. And that gives um, But that, what that does do is give us some sort of um, understanding of the, the, the man Stan Hugel, who you mentioned earlier. Um, mm. I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I've got a, a clip of um, film of Stan Hugel singing. I'm going to see. Uh, tell me if this works or not. But um, let's. He says. Can you see him? Yes. Let's see if we can play it. Tell me if you can hear the song. Can you hear that? Yes. This is about a minute and a half. So I'm going to play it through. So that, that was a clip that you um, you pointed out to me. And uh, tell, tell me about that particular um, shanty that um, they were singing, Lowlands, isn't it? Lowlands, uh, yeah, quite well known. Um, often done as a ballad. There are some very, very good uh, um, versions in, 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 in the ballad tradition. Um, I think Shirley Collins does a, does a nice version of it. Uh, Stan Hugel didn't fancy it as a, a shanty very much, so I believe. Um, and this may uh, maybe linked to the same um, thing that you asked earlier on about the Wellerman and why that 
wouldn't work as a shanty. You could you could tell that he sang that quite slowly, um, and it, you know you don't really want to be hanging around on board a ship waiting for your, for the line to come along so that you can perform the action. You want things to kind of push on quite quickly. So uh, although it's a beautiful song with a beautiful melody, uh, telling quite a, a traditional tale uh, about about sundered lovers and being lost at sea and so on. Um, it's it's success as a shanty is kind of probably limited, and this goes back to the to, to the to the Wellerman that you mentioned. I mean, it's it's a great song, but I think it's a ballad uh, because the, the guy sings the, the kind of four lines at the beginning before the chorus kicks in, and you can't have the crew, the the work gang, has, standing around for four lines, um, waiting for stuff to happen. It's bang 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 call and response. That's that's how it kind of works. Right. Fantastic. Now, you, you very kindly offered to um, perform uh, two or three of uh, from from the book, haven't you? Um, which is very massively kind of you. Um, the first one in the book um, is called Across the Western Ocean. Is that a good one to start with? Well, it's as good as any. Um, I mean, I, I listed them, the songs alphabetically, um, looking at a lot of the, um, the shanty books that, that have been published over the years and the decades since the late 19th century. People will try to organize them in different ways. They'll try to organize them as, here's a bunch of halyard shanties, or here's a, bunk of, a bunch of capstan shanties, or here's a bunch of pumping shanties. And of course, the shanties, you know, uh, the, the, they don't really answer that, that, that kind of level of um, stringency. That, that sometimes they, they're just kind of, they're, they're wheeled out to perform a job that needs to be performed quite quickly, and, and, and then that's enough. Um, so I, I didn't really feel any compunction about, about, about organizing the material in this way, uh, alphabetically rather than anything else. Across the Western Ocean is quite a well-known one. It was popular in, 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 on British ships and American ships. Um, it shows an Irish influence that that was one of the things which drew me to to the tradition and which I talk about quite a lot in the book. Um, a lot of the time the, the crews on both the American and the British vessels would have been made up of expatriate Irish men, uh, either from Liverpool or from New York, and they were a kind of hardy crew and they brought kind of melodies and um, uh, from from a lot of old traditional Irish songs. I mean, I've got no research for this at all. So it's just a, a kind of hunch. But, but one of my hunches is that, that the, uh, the Irish sailors brought, brought melody a lot of the time and, and the African-American influence brought rhythm. Um, and and that's, that's kind of just a spurious kind of notion on, on, my, on my part. But if I was ever gonna do any more work on it, that's one of the things I'll be looking into. So Across the Western Ocean is fine. It, it's, it's a really nice ballad. It can be formed in a number of different ways. Um, it's, it works as, a, as a, a kind of ballad as well as a shanty. Um, but when I'm singing it, you'll hear the kind of call and response version. So if people want to join in and sing the second line and the fourth line, once you learn it, um, you're, you're, happy, you're very welcome to do so at home. Um, <laughs> there's some pressure on me because uh, um, I'm the only other person people can hear, other than themselves, obviously. <laughs> well, we, we've tried this because the Shanty group are singing, uh, singing obviously we had, to, we had to go on, on high hiatus when lockdown came. And we tried a number of different ways to, to kind of sing live. Um, with Zoom, there's a little delay, which, which makes it kind of Im impossible. Yeah. Uh, so it's okay to kind of pre-record stuff. And that's one of the things that TikTok allows you to do is, is to kind of record in real time over a, a pre-existing track. So it sounds like you're actually singing along. Whereas if you try to sing along with me, as we found out, uh, you'll be about a second and a half or maybe two seconds behind me. And that just doesn't work. Um, I'll tell you what, I won't sing anything then. That's good. So that'll, that'll please everyone. <laughs> Oh, the times are hard and the wages low. A meal you are bound to. The Rocky Mountains are my home across the Western Ocean. Oh, a land of promise, there you'll see. A meal you are bound to. I'm bound to cross that Western Sea to join the Irish me to Liverpool, I'll make my way. Amelia, where you're bound to. 
Liverpool, that Yankee school across the Western Ocean. There's Liverpool, Pat, with his tarpaulin hat, a meal away, a bound to. And Yankee Jack, that packet rat across the Western Ocean. Oh, beware those packet ships, I say, a meal away, a bound to. They'll steal your goods and clothes away across the Western Ocean. Mothers and sweethearts, don't you cry, a meal away, a bound to. Sisters and brothers, say goodbye across the Western Ocean. Very good. Very good. Let me show myself again. Fantastic. Let me just, I was just shouting a question out to everyone to get your questions in. But um, um, I, I was, I made some various assumptions as I was sort of starting to invest some time thinking about this. And, and I think there was, um, there was an assumption, there was a limited sort of literacy levels and musical knowledge amongst the crew. Um, but actually, when I, when, when you looked at that, I pr it was, that probably wasn't the case. I mean, uh, I discovered um, one of your references was a guy, Captain Wall, and uh, he grew up in Oxford. Uh, he was a chorister at Magdalen College. Uh, clearly, clearly not a simpleton uh, in anyone's uh, in anyone's world. And uh, and he went on to uh, obviously write along with various others. Did, I mean, is that, is that the case? Am I uh, am I blathering here, or is there some truth to that? No, you're absolutely. I mean, what, what happens is when the, the shanty tradition starts to kind of die out towards the end of the, the, the 19th century, it becomes incorporated as a part of a kind of big folk revival uh, boom that, that's, that's happening. Certainly in, 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 uh, in well, it's, it's happening all over the world, to be honest, in, in, in Britain and America, but also all over Europe. Um, and the past becomes very important all, all of a sudden not all of a sudden, but it becomes increasingly important with the, the rapid onset of, of the Industrial Revolution and the realization that the world is changing before our eyes in, in ways that it's very difficult to kind of to come to terms with. It's, it's not the world that our parents or our grandparents grew up with. So what's left from the past that we really need to, have to hang on to and hold on to? Well, we need to hold on to a lot of culture, obviously, uh, crafts, uh, dances, um, um, uh, um, uh, poetry, um, all, all sorts of uh, art uh, and music. I've got music becomes incorporated as part of this, this folk revival movement. And it's very much a kind of middle class movement. There's a lot of educated people saying, you know, kind of shaking their heads and going, this is, this is terrible, um, that, what, what's happening. We really need to, to kind of remember our identity and salvage it before it disappears forever. Um, so a lot of the people who were um, involved in the field work collecting shanties uh, from uh, aged sailors in, in port towns around the country were, were very, very well educated. A lot of them were, were musicians and musically educated. Um, so they were able to kind of transcribe uh, melodies before the recording equipment was available and so on. Um, and of course, then the shanties become in, in part incorporated into the art music tradition. Um, so we, we, we find it fetching up in, in all sorts of strange places. Uh, people like uh, Percy Granger, uh, Benjamin Britten, um, um, and, and, and so on, other, other, other composers, Debussy in France um, and uh, in, in, in others in America. So there's something about these melodies which becomes very important that they've got to be kind of captured and, and, and kind of salvaged. Uh, one of the things, of course, that they do is they listen to the lyrics that these sailors are singing and they go, oh, no, 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 we, can, we can't have that, I'm afraid. Um, can, I, can, I, can I replace that with something which sounds maybe a little bit similar, but actually leaves out all the, the bad words that our readers won't, won't like? So these, um, these shanties were, were, you know, if you can imagine the atmosphere and the context on board ship, they were being sung by men who, you know, who, who, who were not very well educated and, and who were um, um, away from, from, from port, away from, from loved ones, perhaps, and they were singing as men you know, sing in, in, in all sorts of similar contexts about sex, 
and about all sorts of violence and, and, and using very kind of categorically uh, um, unacceptable language that we, we find today. Uh, and and they, they said the same at the end of the 19th century. So most of the lyrics that have come down to us uh, in the Shanti tradition are kind of replacements for the originals. Uh, and we have to remember that when, when we're singing this stuff. Probably, I, I suspect you had to go through a re-editing process in, in, as you were putting it together for the British, I mean, the British Library don't want to be seen to be publishing uh, um, all sorts of sordid, sordid uh, material. I imagine if they want PR, that would certainly be a way to, uh, to, 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 to have got it. So did you have to go through a, an editing process as well? It was a process of, of um, negotiation. Uh, I mean, they've, they've included a writer at the beginning of the book, which says the archaic and unacceptable views expressed in a small number of the song lyrics do not represent the opinions of the British Library or those of the author. So it was kind of like uh, you hear stories about uh, writers and, and, and how they they negotiate with, with the BBC, for example, about, well, you know, I, I, I'll give you two C's and an F um, if it's before 10 o'clock. And then if it goes past 10 o'clock, I'll give you I'll give you five F's and, and however many S's, SH's you want. I think, okay, so so that that's kind of what we were doing uh, with with the British Library. Some of the stuff um, was was uh, the, you know even in its kind of it's it's heavily kind of contextualized form format uh, was was unacceptable to them because it's a kind of uncertain book. It's a commercial book, really. They're obviously looking to sell copies, but it draws on academic uh, research. So the academic in me is is pushing and saying, look, we need to put in the original so far as we can access it. Mm. Um, but the other side of the commercial side is saying, look, we, we, we can't use this language in, in what is a kind of commercial uh, uh, context. So in the end, it's kind of it's uh, it's 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 a, uh, a compromise that we both can live with. Yes. Thomas has uh, commented. Thomas from the British, um, Thomas Irving from the British uh, Library publishing team. Um, thank you both for a wonderful evening. In terms of the popularity of shanties across social media, why do you think the world responded in such a way? Uh, is it a desire for community, a craving to travel, or perhaps it's linked to increasing productivity while many work from home? So he's obviously Thomas is aligning it to, to being in the pandemic. <laughs> mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, I've been asked a lot, this a lot over the last couple of months. I mean, I mean the, the kind of the story behind even our, our chat here tonight um, is that uh, Shanties broke incredibly big just before, just after Christmas, around, around the new year. Um, and, and it kind of took everybody by surprise. I mean, the first I knew about it was a, a, a journalist from the New York Times got in touch saying, because the book was out in America, saying, um, yeah, well, what do you think about this new shanty craze? And I'm going, what shanty craze? I don't know anything about shanty. She, she said it's all over TikTok. And I said, what's TikTok? Um, yeah. so, um, so it's been a very steep learning curve for, for me to find out about all this. And kind of after that, there's been a real avalanche of people kind of getting in touch and asking me and, and, and so on. And one of the questions they invariably ask is, why now? Why the shanty? Um, and, and people usually have a kind of answer ready themselves that, that they either want confirmed or, or whatever. And it's something to do with lockdown. It's something to do with um, um, the, the kind of uh, isolation that people have been experiencing. It's something about wanting to feel part of a team, I, I, I guess, um, working from home, definitely as, as Thomas suggested. I, I suspect also it may, something have, it may have something to do with Spotify algorithms um, and that once things start to trend, it kind of takes on an energy of its own. Um, and one of the things that pushed it certainly was the kind of appearance of a Spotify playlist, a shanty playlist, which if people are then exposed to it, they will get more exposed to it. And the thing is a kind of self-perpetuating fact. Um, so this is not to deny those other potential um, um, root causes, but it's all just speculation at, at the moment. No doubt someone somewhere is writing, starting to write a PhD about it and, and fair play to them. Um, I'll, I'll happily read it one day, but it won't be me who writes it. Yeah. Well, I had um, Sarah, Sarah put in, there's a few, few, few questions jotting up there. Sarah Bird sent in a question, as did um, um, somebody else. Uh, are there clear regional differences in shanties? Or because this was a trans-global trading route, did they tend to become more similar? And somebody else said, uh, is there more difference between shanties from different parts of the world? 
Not necessarily. I, I, it depends on the technology, I think, ultimately. It's technology that's driving it ra rather than um, uh, space or, or geography so much. The, the, these, the space of the Atlantic is a kind of a, a, in, incredibly diverse um, um, space, which in some sense is kind of is opposed to these big national blocks with which it's surrounded. The, the, it's almost as if the earth becomes kind of uh, subject to a kind of national rhetoric, which are state forming uh, uh, um, energy, whereas the sea kind of remains more of a kind of liminal space. You get these different um, nationalities, different languages, uh, different kinds of people clashing up against each other and having to get by and, and make do and, and kind of get the job done. So there are, there are obviously some differences uh, of emphasis um, in different parts of the world, but I would say mostly it's to do with, um, with, with language rather than with um, melody or uh, um, emphasis. That the, the technology is more or less the same, whether you're on a German ship, excuse me, a British ship, American French or, 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 or a French ship, uh, the job has to be done the same way uh, at, at the same time. So um, you, you may not know a song, but you would be able to join in it very quickly because it's performing, it's, it's, it's kind of functioning the same way on board these different uh, state-sponsored ships um, or state-sponsored spaces. Um, so I, I, I'm not sure, I haven't done really, most of my focus has been on, on the British tradition, which perforce has included a lot of American material because of the high uh, uh, volume of trade between Britain and America during the 19th century. Mm -hmm. um, but I have come across shanties. I mean, you know, when I was researching the book, I found shanties from Poland, from all the, from the Baltic. Uh, there's a very strong tradition in Australia, uh, New Zealand, obviously. There, there, there are kind of traditions wherever the sea is an important aspect of, of, of life. And that's kind of everywhere on the planet, really, if, if you think about it. Um, is, there some link, is there some link to the fact that you, you're based and you have been based for a long time in Liverpool? And Liverpool was such a key trading destination. It was one of the, probably the busiest in the world for a period, I suspect. Um, is, is there a link between your life and the fact that you've led to doing this book because of being living in Liverpool? Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah you're, you're right. Um, you, you move to a new place uh, as, as, as an exile, as a, as a migrant, um, and you, you learn to live where you are. Um, and, and that's the kind of exile ex experience, that's the migrant's experience. And that was certainly my experience moving to Liverpool um, as a place I only knew about, I didn't know. So I spent 30, 35 years finding out about it. One of the things you find out about Liverpool is its, its maritime history and how important that is, um, that, that has become for every aspect of, of, of life in the city, economically, uh, culturally, architecturally, in any way you, you can imagine. Um, so finding out that Liverpool was one of the most important parts of the kind of maritime imaginary throughout the 19th century uh, was an incredibly exciting experience. And then when you start to research the shanties and you find that there are kind of Liverpool versions or Liverpool connections to more or less all of them in, in, in some aspect, that again was incredibly energizing. So you're singing a song or you're singing a kind of music that really was born out of the, out of the kind of the, uh, the, the, the place where you are. Even if it's even if it kind of it's it traits transported. So many of these shanties, Liverpool shanties, sing about South America. They sing about Terra del Fuego. They sing about um, you know cities in Chile. They sing about San Francisco, about uh, you know uh, uh, Greenland, and so on. So what it does is it places you at a kind of node of a very romantic, expansive tradition, uh, and Liverpool becomes kind of connected in that sense. As, to, uh, to a, a very kind of wide global imagination. And I just kind of love that, that notion that, that it's not just a British city. It's a kind of, it's a kind of, sometimes it's a world city. And you can see that in the people who live there and the students who come through it. There's a sense that they, they kind of, they belong everywhere and they, they want to, they, 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 to bring the energy everywhere and from everywhere. 
I'm sorry, I'm just bigging up Liverpool here. I, I love I love Liverpool and absolutely. And um, Jay Thompson very correctly says, "Sing us another, please." So, uh, I, I, um, you're, the second one you're going to do is um, "Blow the Man Down." This is the spread for "Blow the Man Down." Beautiful artwork there, which um, and with the notation and the lyrics. So, um, yes, let's um, let's let's um, hear another one from you. Thank you very much. Okay, so this is obviously a Liverpool one. It's quite quite well well, well known. Probably um, everybody will know it. It's got a very uh, straightforward call and response um, uh, structure. It's got a halyard shanty, so that it would have been for pulling on sales, and everybody would have been pulling at the same time on on down in the response. The word down. Um, um, just seems there anything more interesting about it? Um, it's also got connections with Mobile in in Alabama. Um, um, so anyway, um, oh, there is an intro. I found a, a fantastic version of this uh, on, on an old CD, which is um, 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 a, a CD of Shanty's first record in the 1950s. And there's a, ver there's a version being sung by Harry H. Corbett. Does anybody remember Harry H. Corbett? <laughs> <laughs> uh, from Step Step Tone Son, you dirty old man, you know. Like so uh, check out uh, Harry H. Corbett's version of Blow the Man Down. <laughs> As I was rolling down Paradise Street, way hey, blow the man down. A big Irish copper I happened to meet. Give me some time to blow the man down. Blow the man down, bullies, blow the man down. Way, hey, blow the man down. Blow him right back into Liverpool town. Give me some time to blow the man down. Said you're a black baller by the coat of your hair. Way, hey, blow the man down. You're a black baller by the clothes that you wear. Give me some time to blow the man down. I said to the scuffer, you got me all wrong. Way, hey, blow the man down. I'm a flying fish sailor, home from Hong Kong. Give me some time to blow the man down. Now you sailed on some packet that flies the black ball. Way, hey, blow the man down. You've robbed some poor sailor of boots, clothes and all. Give me some time to blow the man down. Says he to me, mate, look, you're breaking the law. Way, hey, blow the man down. So I smashed in his face and I stove in his jaw. Give me some time to blow the man down. They gave me six months in Liverpool town. Way, hey, blow the man down for a beating and a kicking and a blowing him down. Give me some time to blow the man down. A Liverpool ship and a Liverpool crew. Way, hey, blow the man down. A Liverpool mate and a scout skipper too. Give me some time to blow the man down. Round of applause, <laughs> all round, all round. Um, so, uh, how, how you're part of the the rock light rollers? Uh, d d have you got like a whole repertoire from from this book as well? Is that a is that a? Um, I mean, I suppose you haven't been doing much performing recently. <laughs> no, um, well, I don't seem with the, the rock light rollers so much anymore. Um, the, the rest of the, the the guys in that band had had their own band. Um, um, and that they were just a folk band that gigging, you know, they did weddings and, and, and stuff and things like that. Uh, they were a great band, um, but we just got together just for fun, really, to, 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 to do this. Uh, but I formed a shanty group at work at John Moore's um, a couple of years ago. Um, it's been through various iterations. Um, uh, at one point, I think we were called the, the Full Shanty uh, and then not the Full Shanty um uh, and various other, other other names and that's just yeah we meet once a week um we we have a, we have fun kind of learning the songs and singing the songs as staff and students involved um and we we were doing a few gigs around the city we're just getting ready to record an album uh, we record in a room not dissimilar to the one that stan hugel was singing in in that in that clip that you showed uh, an old church 
in, in our um, university building uh, on Mount Pleasant in, in Liverpool. Um, and everybody was enjoying it. Everybody was having fun. Um, and of course, then we just got, we, we got um, like, like everybody else, singing seems to be one of the things that, uh, yeah. that, that seems to be particularly demonized um, as, as part of this, this process. So unfortunately, that's gone for the time being. But I, I do, I think the idea of singing, uh, and that's possibly where this, the whole kind of resurgence comes from, is so cathartic. And, uh, and I think um, it's, it's helping us all get through um, in, in our own, well, we all get through in our own ways, but singing has been a big solution for a lot of people. We've got, um, we've got eight minutes left, so there's a little um, selection of um, questions. Um, I'd never even thought. Uh, do other industries have shanties? I, I understand, um, obviously, the slave trade um, in Southern America, Southern US, and and boats. W would other industries have had shanties? Yeah, they may not have called them shanties. They may just call them work songs. But yeah, um, there's, and there's a kind of crossover in, in some respects between, for example, lumberjack songs, um, the Steve the, the Stevedore songs, the the, uh, the the songs that were sung by the people loading and unloading the boats. Uh, train workers, they, they would have had um, songs. Any any kind of any kind of profession that that has teams of people working together physically uh, would, would would probably have their own singing and song tradition, because it just seems to be a fact that the the work passes more quickly, more agreeably, or less disagreeably, uh, and more efficiently if, if you're singing. Um, so. It may go all the way back to the pyramids. Who who, who knows uh, what what the slaves sang uh, when they were building those? But mm. uh, it seems likely that given the, the the role that music plays in in the life of the species and, and how it evolved, that it brings us some kind of um, level of experience beyond that which mere language or physicality can can bring us. And that's why it remains such a kind of valuable uh, and valued. Um, um, practice that, that you know wh wh wherever you go in the world you'll find people singing something uh, or trying to sing yeah uh, and and it, yes so so the answer to that is yes yes um sarah's referencing blow the man down um it's fascinating the words are entirely different uh, except the chorus to what um she learned in in cornwall so uh, did you find regional versions and you had to ch pick one of them for all the different um songs? Yeah. Absolutely, yeah. I mean, the thing with London, Cardiff, Liverpool, it, it, with a little bit of creativity, you can fit most place names into those. New York, Boston, Sydney. You know, if it's got if it's got that kind of uh, two stress, uh, I, I am kind of you know you can put, and then you can kind of uh, tailor the words accordingly. Um, so yeah, there are regional versions of of all these. Um, they don't really belong to, and I suppose the Liverpool versions prevail for the reasons that we discussed earlier on, Liverpool being such an important uh, port in the 19th century. Mm. But yes, of course, it's, it's natural that people would want to own them uh, and understand them in terms of their own locality. So, uh, and that, that's part of the attraction of the tradition, I think. Yeah, yeah. Georgina, it's not really a question, but so uh, uh, well done. I sailed into Dublin on the Norwegian tall ship I've got to pronounce that. Lem, Lem Cool. Uh, don't know. Eighty people in the rigging singing shanties, which amazed the office workers. Uh, I, I have no idea how long ago that would have been, but I suspect that was quite recently. Um, which, I, think I uh, saw that. I think I think my, my daughter sent me um, a clip a clip of that, um, uh, and I saw that they were up in the rigging and everything. They were singing a version of uh, South Australia. Um, I think. Uh, yeah, it was it was uh, it was stunning. It was fantastic to, to see that still being. Brilliant. And um, Lucinda Thompson was the first question I got. But do you have a favourite shanty? Um, I have a couple, um, Lucinda. Um, I think uh, <coughs> Hanging Johnny <laughs> perhaps might be one of them for reasons that, that you might um, you might understand. I, 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 I like the Hog Eye Man, uh, I think. Um, the Hog Eye Man is one of the more risque shanties um, that, that have survived. Uh, it's scurrilous um, in, in its original form, um, and it's, but it's been hi highly changed. And the reason I like it is particularly uh, is that um, it's been incorporated into a shanty musical that I'm currently working on with some friends and, and colleagues. 
Um, this was again before TikTok, before um, shanties were cool or trendy. Uh, we, we decided that the kind of the pirate musical needed a, a, a revamp and we were going to do a kind of shanty musical. So uh, while I was kind of researching the, the songs to go in this book as well, I was kind of deciding on uh, or thinking about the structure of a, of, of a, a potentially successful musical theatre show and, and how shanties could be incorporated into it. And one of the one of the, the characters that we ended up was this person called the Hog Eye Man, who was going to uh, feature in in uh, the, the the musical, the stage musical, as a kind of um, a kind of master of ceremonies, come villain, come devil character. Uh, so I, I like I like the Hog Eye Man. Brilliant, brilliant. Um... Have sales of the book really taken off with the, uh, you called it the shanty talk uh, trend in the States? This may be more obvious as it's been uh, been out longer over there. But uh, um, yeah, I mean, is that that's a, is that a fair thing that the, the sales have taken off? I wouldn't know, to be honest. I have no idea. I have no idea. I checked on on Thomas Amazon. To answer that. <laughs> I checked on Amazon the first day and, and it, it had gone It had sold out. Uh, but I don't know how many copies um the, the publishers had sent through to 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 to, to amazon and um, so i really don't know I, I guess i'll find out at the end of the financial year when when, when they tell me um I, I really don't know well we've got about um we've got about we've got about 10 left in our shop so if anyone's mm -hmm. short um you can get them from, and they're signed as well now that uh, um which is rather lovely the um Oh, Ge Georgina came back. Uh, it was her husband in the on the boat, and it was twenty seventeen. So I don't know whether that fits with um, your memories. Mm. So right, you were um, it's so kind of you to join us tonight, and uh, we, we chose a th or you chose a third song that you're going to do that probably will take us into our uh, eight o'clock curfew, um, which is the Hog Eyed Man. Uh, can you tell us about that song? Well, as I've already mentioned, it's it's one of the ones that that uh, that's um, a, a little a little scurrilous. Um, uh, Sh Shan, um, Stan Hugel says about it that um, it, it's a shanty usually spoken of in hushed tones by collectors, and he admitted that the solo parts were indecent and a large amount of camouflaging was necessary before this song could be made public. Um, so. Um, and, and this was one of the, I mean, I, I kind of treat of this in, in the book on a section entitled Body and, and how we actually, uh, how we actually salvage a kind of positive relationship with the material, which is so kind of objectionable in, in terms of our, 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 our current um, values. Uh, but the Hog Eye Man is good. Uh, I, I, I like it as a melody um, and it reminds me of, it, it kind of, it, it fills me with hope for the future that uh, we're, th there's going to come a point where I'm going to have a, a full audience at Edinburgh singing along to this um, and, and uh, in, enjoying it, uh, the Hog Eye Man. So uh, again, um, if you want to join in the chorus, please, please do. Uh, <clears throat> Hand me down my riding cane, I'm off to see my darling Jane and a hog eye. Railroad Navy with his hog eye. Steady on a jig with a hog eye. Oh, she wants the hog eyed man. The hog eyed man is the man for me. Sailing down from Wallace Sea. And a hog eye. Railroad Navy with his hog eye. Steady on a jig with a hog eye. Oh. She wants the hog eyed man. He came to the shack where Sally did dwell, knocked on the door and he rang her bell. And a hog guy, railroad nubby with his hog guy, steady on a jig with a hog guy. Oh, she wants the hog eyed man. Oh, who's been here since I've been gone? A railroad navvy with his sea boots on. And a hog guy, railroad navvy with his hog guy. Steady on a jig with a hog guy. Oh, she wants the hog eyed man. If I catch him here with Sally once more, I'll sling.
sling me hook, go to sea once more. And a hog guy, railroad nubby with his hog guy, steady on a jig with a hog guy. Oh, she wants the hog guy man. Sally's in the garden shifting sand. The hog guy man sitting hand in hand. And a hog guy, railroad nubby with his hog guy, steady on a jig with a hog guy. Oh, she wants the hog eyed man. Oh, the hog eyed man is the man for me. He is blind and he can't see. And a hog guy, railroad nubby with his hog guy, steady on a jig with a hog guy. Oh, she wants the hog eyed man. Very good, very good. Let me show self. Oops. Uh, wonderful. Jerry, thank you so much for tonight. It's um, been an absolute joy. And um, uh, in, a, in a way, it gives me hope for the future. The fact that we're, um, there, there, there is some light at the end of the tunnel. And when we've got people like you singing songs like that, life's going to be all right. I hope so. Thank you very much. I, re I really enjoyed it. Uh, you, you, you're a very good host. Um, you made me feel very comfortable. Um, so um, I really enjoyed it. Mm -hmm. I hope people enjoy the book and um, I'd like to send my best wishes to everybody for uh, health and positivity going forward. Thank you so much to everyone who joined. Um, that was um, great comments coming in. Um, lovely to see and uh, thank you. And we'll see you next time. I've got a number of events next week. If you want to go to tringbookfestival.co.uk, you can see all our events there. But uh, thank you once again, Jerry, and uh, see you very soon. You're welcome. Take care. Bye-bye.